What's up, everybody? Big Herc 916 getting down with Fresh Out. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, represent and share the channel and wash your ass. Go to freshoutseries.com because ain't nothing worse than a smelly booty, man. Man, we getting down with some great interviews and I have Lady Perp with me here today. You guys have been asking about having more females on the channel, so we're going to bring you some. And Lady Perp got a crazy story. And we're going to get the lowdown dirty on what went down when she first got locked up and what it was like. Um, Lady Perp, tell the people a little bit about what happened when you first got caught up and what that experience was like. It was crazy. That experience was crazy. So when I first arrived to actually... Um to Chowchilla, because it's a very, very active prison. I mean, as soon as you get there, it's just, it's live. You don't know what to do. I didn't know where to go, who to kick it with, um, none of that. I was, I was nervous. I mean, it's your first time you get your little, they tell you where to go. It's like a big area. You don't know where, you, like, it's just so many things going through your mind, who you're going to run across there, your enemies, like who, who you're going to see there, who you're going to roll with. If it's, if it's um, political, like in the men's prisons, it's just, it's, it's pretty crazy. So what, what was the crime that got you locked up? Um, the first time I went to prison, I went to prison for a sales case and a gun charge. I got busted oh, with, yeah, I got busted with 143 grams of crystal, 91 grams of heroin, a loaded firearm and 43 rounds of oh, ammo. Oh, yeah. you putting in some work. Yeah, <laughs> I was doing the mostest out there. But I was an addict and I was in my addiction and I was just, it was, you know, at that time you're just, you don't, you don't even think about what could happen, you know what I mean? Like, what kind of time you could get from that. When you were, uh, so when you, when you got arrested with all that, was it a, a, a raid or did you get pulled over or did somebody snitch on you or? It was a mixture of it all. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah, they had been watching me for 10 days and um, I actually had left to go buy a, a car and they had my whole house set up and everything. So it oh, was, wow. yeah, it was a sting. They were waiting for me. I had, like I said, they had an informant on me as well. So they, they were just on me. I was just hot out there. Now, was that in, 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 in Arizona or in California? It was in California. Oh, shit. Yeah, it was in Bakersfield, California. So going to the county, was, was the county experience pretty crazy or how was it in the county jail? The county experience to me was pretty smooth because I was in and out of that system like for like 11 years. It was prison that I was scared of because that was my first term. Yeah, so county was nothing. I knew everybody there. I was I was there every righteously. So it wasn't, I mean, I hate to say it, but they yeah. knew me there. I was like, so when I, usually when I would go in there, I would take drugs. So everybody was like waiting for me to touch down. Like I had everything set up when I got there. I knew the laundry girls. I would get everything new. I would get hooked up. Oh shit. So now when you got this, get, get, you caught this case and you got the time with it like, oh shit, I got to actually sit down and do some time and like, had the, you know with the same judge they see you like okay this is it you gotta you get you're gonna sit down yes it was i would always have like the same judges they knew i was burnt out there i wasn't really known um so this time when i had got hit um i was a repeated drug offender like all my cases were sales so this time I had got busted with heroin and crystal, so it was a little bit different. Usually I was just selling crystal, and then oh, this was my first weapon charge as well. So they kind of packed it on me when it came to the drug charges. The gun charges, they really didn't give me too much time for. They, I think I got eight months for the guns and the ammo. Oh, yeah. shit. So how much time did they give you total for, your, for the drugs and the gun? It was 3.8 I got, but um, I ended up catching another three going in because I got caught with stuff taken in. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> So, and, and, you know, for people who don't know, like, I always tell people, like, in prison, there's an economics game, and, and pretty much drug runs yeah. a lot of that. Now, as far as what kind of money were, you know, is involved with, with drugs in prison as opposed to in the street? Because I tell people, like, what on the street, like, somebody I look at for, like, 20 bucks in prison, that might be, like, triple or quadruple, yeah. right? Yeah, it is. It's about, like... Say you're selling for a 20 in there for like 100. Even if you were to buy a 20, you're going to get like a crumb. It's really it's really nothing. But people buy it, you know, because there's so many addicts in there. There's so many people like trying to that are either fighting cases and been in there for a while. And actually, when something comes through, you know, they don't they'll give they'll give everything for it. You know what I mean? All their hygiene, everything. They don't care. They won't Damn. eat nothing. They'll give you everything for their stuff. Yeah. <clears throat> so in, in the women's prison, when you roll up, is it the same thing like? With the men's, because I know in the men's you roll up and it's like, 
hey, homie, where you from? Hey, who, who was on the bus with you? Blah, blah, blah. There's a lot of that going on, like the, yeah. the, the cat call and everybody's like trying to like find out what's happening and, and you know, uh, who's here and blah, blah, blah and all that stuff. Yeah, uh, you get that a lot. Like when you first get off, there's people asking if so-and-so came because they're waiting for something because usually people oh, are coming in with stuff and yeah. stuff like that or they want to know if they enemies are coming in or their people are coming in. When I got in there, it wasn't really too much. But like I said, I was new to everything. Like I wasn't a known face in there. So I was. I had a all like... All of my incarcerations have been pretty smooth. I think it's what you make it, you know? Yeah. yeah. So did you have any 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 homies in there? Because I know when I went, I didn't know anybody. So when I got there, the only people like I even possibly knew was somebody I was in the, uh, the holding facility with. So when I got there, I didn't like, it was like everybody was brand new. I had no, nobody from my neighborhood, nobody I knew on the street. So it was just like a fresh experience. Yeah. For me, um, like I said, I knew a lot of people because I was always in and out of county. Okay. So a lot of people were already up there that I knew. But um, like I said, uh, when you get to it's so big there, you know what I mean? And then in California, there's so many women prisons. So I was more worried about where I was going to get shipped to, like which prison I was going to get shipped to and if I was going to know people there. But once I got to Chowchilla, I knew a lot of people there. Now, is there the gang element in the women's prison, like in the guys' prisons too? Um. It can be. I think it depends um, on the people. You know what I mean? Like, I wasn't really into that kind of stuff. You know okay. what I mean? So it was a little different for me, but I've seen it there. They, they do politic a little, you know? Okay. Because I know even in the men's, like, if you're, even if you're, not pre, if you're not in the gang, it's like, okay, Northern Cali, Southern Cali, or this part of L.A., or the Bay Area, or, you know, this part of L.A., or this part of, you know, whatever, SoCal. So I know it's a lot of that, too, because, like, even going to sit, you got to figure out what table to sit at. Yeah. You know, you can't, this is so-and-so's table. This is, you know, so-and-so's table. So it's like everything is based on even, even such small, like, demographics mm -hmm. and clicks. Everything's clicks in there. So, you know, I, I try to stay out the way and watch who I hung out with because, you know, once you start hanging out with certain people, it ties you into certain bullshit. Yeah, it does. It does. It invites a lot, too. Um, I remember a time where... <laughs> This is when I first got there and I sat at a table and um, I sat with this lady, right? And she was all into church and everything. I thought it was cool. You know, we start chopping it up or whatever. Well, come to find out later on down the line after doing time, she ended up being a, a baby case. And um, it was like, I, you know, that's why she was trying to make friends. You know oh, what I mean? And people yeah. had gave me the rundown about her. And after that, I was like, hey, I can't, <clears throat> I can't sit with you. You, you know, yeah. I can't sit with you no more. My bad. Like, I didn't know what you were about. I didn't know your background. Like, and that was my first time going to prison when I had, um, sat down with that lady and I was like, damn, man, my bad. <laughs> Isn't it, is it it's the same, like in men's, cause I know in men's prison, like if somebody finds out somebody was involved in like some type of like child pedophile, anything, if you know and you don't do, so, it's like, that's like, you, you, that's a wrap. Yeah. Like I know in men's prison, is it the same way in women's prison? Do they look at like, you don't kid stuff, they don't mess around with that or is it just serious? It's serious, but there's some women because so many women in there have kids and stuff and families to go home to. They kind of let it slide, but there are these individuals in there, and I knew a few that um, they they do get at these females and they make them PC up and stuff like that, or they they get them removed from the yard. Oh, wow. I've seen it happen. Yeah. Wow. Now, um, I just did a video for Fresh Out when I was talking about like they had these women in prison posing, and you know I, I was telling these, these guys that hey. For women in prison, it's a lot different because the men a lot of times don't ride like the women do for the men on the other side. Uh -huh. So, you know, what, from what you've seen, how, how, how did that play out in the relationship wise? Were there a lot of women that had guys actually coming up there to see them that had their backs or was a lot of these women having to carry it more on their own with their, with their mother, their relatives helping them out? I think um, it was a little 50 50 of both because there was females in there that would have dudes that would take care of them. But it was usually like pin pals that they would find and stuff like that. And they would like use them for money and whatnot, usually yeah. older guys and stuff like that. But the majority like, I mean, like for me, it was family. I had yeah. my family that was always there for me. And when I didn't have that, I learned how to hustle in there. I started tattooing. I started drawing. I started doing eyebrows. Anything that made money, braiding hair. Yeah. I learned it all in there so I could, you know what I mean? I didn't have to ask my family for anything. Now, do women's prisons have conjugal visit like men's prisons? Um, I believe they, yeah, they do. Okay. Because mm -hmm. I know in the state, 
that's like a big thing. Feds, there's no conjugal, so you're you're hit. Yeah. But in the state, like guys get married and then they, yeah. you know, get the business and weekends and stuff like that. So I know that's a big thing because guys are like, why don't they have that in the feds? But the feds is like international, so they don't allow people to come in like that. So they do have that in the women's prisons? Yeah. I think when I was in CIW, they had um, a little building in the back that was for visits like that. Oh, it was wow. like a little house, like a little house. Okay. And it had like a little playground for kids and everything. It was pretty, it was pretty neat. Like a, it was like a little house. Now, do they have um, a lot of programs in the women's prison for like um, trades and schools and stuff like that? Or, you know, is it more or less you kind of just like create your own program? Because I know in the men's, they do have some stuff where you can get like a degree or you can take like HVAC or different things like that. What, what type of programs do they have for women in there? Yeah, they had all that in... Um in prison too. They had actually for construction. They had, um, I know that they had beauty for a while. They had like to do okay. hair and stuff like that. Um, they have a lot of stuff dealing with like computer business, stuff like that. They have a lot of programs in California. So they do have a, a lot of transition stuff. Now, do you, yeah. is there, is there a high rate of women, um, coming back or do you, from your experience from just going, you know, being in the system, have you seen a lot of women actually have, um, more success in rehabilitating themselves while they're in there? I think um, while I was in there, a lot of people come back. You know what I mean? Like a lot of people, uh, they don't really take what they get. I mean, I can't speak for everybody, but for myself, I took what I could and I stood clean and you know what I mean? I did my own footwork. Some of the women just get out and they go back right back to the same stuff. You know what mm. I mean? They don't um, take what they get from the prison because they do give you a lot of help. Um, but they, yeah, most of them, they, they come back. Now, how, how hard is it? Because I know for a woman going to prison and having a child is, you know, I would imagine it being a lot harder for guys, you know, oh, they see their kid, but most of the, you don't think of the, the man as having that type of intimate relationship. Now, how much harder is that for a woman in there? Is there, you know, with women who come in there and maybe have to try to, you know, they're, they're locked up and their kids maybe somehow defaulted to um, child protective services. How does that work? Um, well, for me, like um, when I went to prison, my daughter was two months old and I was kind of worried about raising her from in there. My mom was in Arizona at the time, so I wasn't able to get visits or anything like that. But they did have programs in there. They had like buses that would take the kids like like an adult with the kid to come and visit. They oh, wow. had um, reading programs to where you would go and you would pick out a book and you would read the book to your, your child and they would record it. So they oh, wow. send it back home. They had a lot of stuff like that for kids. So they did have a lot of stuff that keep you reunited with your kids. You know what I mean? Okay. Yeah, that was one of my biggest concerns because I think that that bond there, and because like I say, usually the, the the mother is in the child's life more than the father yeah. just because of default. But being able to have that involvement with your child so they don't feel like ostracized or anything like that, I think that's a you know very important and something that they should implement more. Um, as far as like you know dealing with a lot of the the guards and their attitude and how they treated you, do you feel like the guards, um, for the most part, were pretty upstanding? I mean, did they, were there a lot of, um, like, politicking with the guards, or did the guards pretty much keep, you know, have some integrity in how they treated the, the women uh, inmates? I think they had integrity. They were pretty... Um... They were pretty cool, you know what I mean? Like, as long as you respected them, it was like a given. You respect them, they respect you, you know what I mean? Like, um, then you get, like, the ones that, you know, they have, like, a power trip and stuff like that. Then you have ones that are, especially the males, that, that are messing with females and stuff like that in there. And just, it, but most, for the most part, they're pretty cool. They're pretty, they're pretty down to earth and, and respectful, you know? <coughs> now, you know, prior to getting out, do they have, like, um, like like pretty much like uh, community integration programs, like halfway house programs too. Like, do you have like, depending on how much time you have, you're entitled to so much time in a halfway house or how does that work? Um, they have that. They do have uh, programs that help you, that get you on your feet. Like, so you could parole like on the ankle monitor and then go into one of those homes and finish your time there. If you qualify, they have um, homes that you could just go to so you could get like a head start in life. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So now as far as, women who are dealing with situations where they had to somehow get away from a, a really bad relationship. Is there anything that allows those women to have some type of um, 
protection when they get out because you know you got some of these some of these some of these guys are crazy you know and, yeah. and, and, and women dealt with a situation because they were trying to get out of it now is there anything that protected women getting out that have dealt with these corporate relationships that they are, you know, so that they're kind of protected so these people don't know they're out or they don't have to, you know, somehow deal with these bad relationships again, like these crazy exes? Is there anything implemented into the system like that? I think that they have homes that offer that, like, you know what I mean? That kind of protect you, kind of like a, like Safeway houses okay, okay. That, that protect you from stuff like that. That's an option as well. And I think with those homes, you could actually take your children there and then they help you get into housing and stuff okay. like that. Okay. Yeah, that was something I was always curious because I used to um, give away clothes and stuff. Me and my wife to go to the house in East LA. We used to go out there and donate. And some of these women in the middle of the night would just get up and leave because, yeah. you know, these guys, they're just, you know, being terrorized. So I know um, you see a lot of situations where you have cases and, you know, they, 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 they like there was a case where I saw the girl killed the guy. She said she'd be in human traffic and they convicted her because they said, well, you were with the guy for this long, but I'm like, if this guy is exploiting her and she's underage, how does she, you know, how do you, how do you deal with that? Yeah, that's, that's a crazy situation right there. That's a lot, a lot of that going on. Um, that's, that's crazy. <laughs> I mean, there were a lot of women, did you, there were a lot of women who were in there dealing with like guys who were trying to pimp on them and they got, a, they did something to the guy to, and they caught a case or were there a lot of situations like that? Or? I didn't see a lot like that. I seen more domestics, if anything, like a lot more domestics. I was actually in there with, um, Jody Arias and she was, she was, her case was a trip. Like a lot of people, she's really famous for her case. And I her think, case? uh, her case, she killed her boyfriend and it was like big here in Arizona. Oh wow. Yeah. And, um, when you meet her, I think it's just something like something tr like, I think he was using her and and she just flipped the script. It was like a crime of passion. You know what I mean? Oh, wow. You see a lot of that in there. Wow. Like a lot of that with women. Yeah, because I mean, it's, I, I, you know, it'd probably be no different than like it's in the OJ case. Yeah. They said, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. Literally like two, double murder, but they couldn't really prove it. But, you know, crime of passion, jealousy mm -hmm. and a lot of yep. stuff like that. So, you know, I'd imagine that help, help happens, you know, likewise in, in the same thing, you know, in women's prison. Yeah. Um, I've seen a lot of that in there. Wow. Yeah, that's so, oh, you know, as far as the women you ran across in there, was there any women in particular that like really stood out in your mind? Like, you know, this bitch is crazy right here, you know, or, you know, this, this is somebody I, you know, I could tell that they, they have some really dark issues or something like that. Cause I know I used to vibe with certain people and you could tell like, Oh, this dude right here, he ain't, he ain't wrapped too tight. Yeah, there's a lot of that too. I've been in there with a lot of crazy. It's crazy how they actually throw us in there with those kind of people, not knowing as being general population, we might trip on them, you know, not knowing that they're a little off and stuff like that. You, you would think that they would house them different than us, but they don't. They just throw them in there too, like, and um, they just throw them in there and you got to find out by yourself who's... So they're not, they're like, cause I know like in the feds and in the state, like you have a USP... And then you have regular prison, then you have camp. So you have at the highest, like people doing a gang of time, like four lives plus a hundred years. Do they have the women all mixed in together or do they have the different levels to where some women who are more high, do they, they have them in a separate higher, you know, category prison? No, we're all housed together. Oh, wow. Yeah, because I remember my first Sally, she was a lifer. And then um, down the hall from me, there was another girl that was doing like 130 years and stuff like that. So they all, they don't, they don't treat them any different. They're all housed exactly the same with us. And, and is it the same, like, as far as you don't really come in there, like talking about your case or do people ask you for paperwork or how does that work? Cause I know in the, in the feds and then people want to see if you're, if you're clicked up, people like bring your paperwork. They want to see if you're hot, if you told on somebody or if you have a, a dirty case or, you know, is it like that too? Do they ask for yeah, they do. Oh, they they do? run that too. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> of course, because they want to know who they're being housed with, you That's know, right. over there in the females prison, like it doesn't, they'll house you with anybody. It does you don't have an option. Like they won't house you with, um, they'll house you with a different race. I know in some men's prisons, they really don't care. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. They, like in yeah. men's prisons, it's like, you know, they ask you, you blood or crib, you know, you from blah, blah, yeah. blah, you know, so they got, you know, they give you an option, but then they put that down. So I always tell people, soon you say that, oh, I'm a blood, okay. Yeah, your that's blood. where you're going. And it follows you. <laughs> you know, you get to every institution now, they're going to put you with the blood. Yeah. So they don't do that in women's prayer. They mix it then. It's like, yeah, it was mixed. Yeah. And you're with every, a little bit of everybody. Cells. What was that? More dorms or cells? Um, when, okay, when I was in Chowchilla, it was an eight-man cell. And then when I got to uh, CIW, it was two-man cell. Oh, wow. And like I said, my first uh, cellie, she was a lifer. Oh, yeah. shit. That's crazy. Yeah, because... Uh, 
you know, I, I had this, I had a, my, my, before I paroled, um, my last cellmate, he was, he was a Mexican, mm -hmm. but you know, we was cool. Cause you know, up North we, it's different. Nobody does not like really that racial thing, yeah. but I know a lot of dudes are like tripping off me. Like, brother, Hey man, what are you doing in there with that? And they, even they called me up to talk to the Lieutenant and the captain, like, Hey, <laughs> Are you ready to be in here with a Mexican guy? Blah blah blah. Yeah. So we were cool, and they had a bunch of people come in there like a group thing. Yeah, and it was like a big political thing. Yeah, because of like the mixing like that. But so it's not as politicized like that as far as the races in. Yeah, no, prison. it's not. They'll house you with anybody. I mean, as long as you guys are get along and you guys are cool. And I actually think if you how there's you get some type of benefit if you house with another race. Oh wow. Yeah, it's I forgot what it is, but you get some type of little benefit if you house with another race. And see, I I think that's a big thing as far as like just the whole racial thing cuz I know people used to trip because they used to see me talking to different dudes. I remember I was talking to a just casually on the yard on the way pile talking with a white guy and then somebody said, "Hey man, the homie said you was talking to the white. What were you talking to him about, man? You can't be doing." That. I'm like, "Damn." Who see me talking to who? You know, I yeah. mean, it's like people are watching you, mm -hmm. telling your business, and somebody else checks you about it because everything in the men's prison is predominantly racial. What is the big divide in the women's prison if there is a big divide? Because I know it's, it's race and, and cliques in men's prison. I think it, it'd be, if anything, it'd be gangs. Okay. Yeah. It'd be gangs in there. Um, that's probably... Basically, it race is like I said. We house with everybody, and it's really not an issue in the women's prison. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. That's interesting. Hey, and there you have it. <laughs> Big Herc nine one six getting down with fresh out. You tired of smelling like stinky butt, funky armpits? Wash your ass. Go to freshoutseries.com and pick you up a bar of soap.